Moving on to number 15 of this list, and we have Dead Island. Now, I know a lot of you will be thinking, why on earth is this here? Especially because Arkham City was just behind it, and a few other great games were just behind it. And that's because I had a lot of hype going into this game, and the hype proved well to me. I know not a lot of people have probably played it and thought, Ah, oh, nah, stupid, it's ridiculous, it's not great, it's stupid, 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 stupid. But I really like Dead Island. Again, zombie games are a thing to me, not every single zombie game, but if you give me an open world zombie game, especially in first person, I will jump on that like a man riding a horse into battle. It is that epic to me, that aspect, that that concept is so good to me. And I was just, I was raving about this game. I was like showing it to friends, my friends were showing it to me. And then eventually it came down to two of us, I remember, me and another friend who were the only people left who actually wanted to still get this game. I remember it being in development for quite a while and there was a early trailer that was released and then a trailer about two years down the line. And I'm going to address a problem that some people had with this game was that the the main trailer they brought out with the little girl in the hotel really set apart from what Dead Island actually was and I think that's what most of its criticism came from was where people thought about the trailer was going to deeply impact the feeling of the game which it didn't. But that didn't bother me. I just played the game and uh, the first thing that I love about this game is the the way you feel like you're actually hurting the zombies or actually hitting them the impact whatever impact engine they've got on their physics engine it's really good because it feels like a physical entity like you are actually hitting that zombie you could get like a bat you'd hit a clonk of the bat and you'd feel the you'd, you'd feel and see the force of the the head if you're hitting the head go to the side or back Backwards or up, and if you were using a sword, you could you could see the sword go right into the the body and slice away some flesh and stuff like that. It was it was a really good physics Im impact engine, I'm going to call it. And another thing about that was that they had a multi-layer damage system, which was another good thing, where the more you attack a zombie, the more deteriorated it would come. Uh, you would hit it in its face, maybe a bit of its cheek came off, and then you did it again, I think a bit more of its cheek would come off, and you start seeing bone, and then you could just keep beating on it until eventually it was a bloody pulp and nothing was there. But moving on to the free roam aspect of Dead Island, it was quite free roamy, you could get about with cars, but the cars were a bit clunky, there wasn't really some great mechanics on the cars, uh, they were quite lightweight, and the just crashed into stuff stupidly. They didn't really have a good uh, hitbox around them, if you want to call it that, because they seemed to crash even when you know they didn't crash on anything. But getting around was all right. It wasn't that big of a map. Uh, you could go into certain places. You'd have to try and get into certain places by finding an alternate route, maybe jumping over some stacked boxes to get into the back of a garage or something like that. It was good free roam, the, the environment was pretty good. I liked the whole Hawaiian, you know, holiday thing. You go into a place, you'd see the pool, pool of blood, zombies probably lying in it. Maybe one guy's crying, lying in it, I remember that scene. And it was, it was a good atmosphere as well, I'm going to say. The atmosphere and the location, they all played a part. You could go to different locations as well, I believe, like the jungle and then the, the another island, I believe, and then you're on the ship, or not the ship, or some sort of facility. And it was really good that you could, you could, you don't stay in this one area. Like, it wasn't just this one whole open world area, it was a few little open worldy areas. And I really like the travelling around, seeing these different places and how they've adapted or what has become of them since the outbreak. And it was just pretty good. I'm not going to say it was amazing, you know, it 
did seem very linear, didn't really like the characters. Cutscenes were freaking stupid, I'll say that now. The cutscenes were horrible. The lip syncing of the characters was bloody awful, the voice acting was bloody awful. And it was just... Overall, everything apart from the gameplay was bloody awful. I didn't, I didn't catch on to the story. What happened? Did, did, was some guy just... I, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't remember what the story was because it was that far-fetched and I think you had to cure someone. That was... Wah! I'm not going to remember that. That's not something to remember. Cure this person. Okay. I'll cure them. But... Aside from story, Dead Island had good gameplay. And to me, that's what makes a game half and half. You've got the gameplay and the story and basically Dead Island was 50-50 but the reason why I put it in front of things like Arkham City and Grid and Operation Flashpoint and all these sort of other games that you may think are a bit more polished Dead Space, Dead Rising 2 is because the hype I had for Dead Space not Dead Space, Dead Island. What am I talking about? The hype I had for Dead Island was huge. And my hype going into that game was huge. And when I got into it, it didn't disappoint me in the terms of hype I had. Because I just really wanted to get into an open world zombie bloodfest. And I did. So that's why it's number 15.